I don't believe that there are barriers between the arts. You can't advance and change the future without looking at the past. Puppet theater in America, it really starts with Tony Sarg. And people will recognize his drawings, people will tell you about the sea monster hoax. The master of merchandising. Modern puppet theater in the U.S. comes to life. With an untiring work ethic. The breadth of his talent, of his collection, and the impact that he had on the world. A leading light in the marionette arts. And what was so genius about Tony Sarg is that he was able to bring together the best craftspeople. With a touch of envy and a deep bow, we present the man who pulls the strings, Tony Sarg. Coban, Guatemala on April 21, 1880 to a diplomatic family of German and English descent, Tony Sarg was surrounded by puppets in his youth as the inheritor of his grandmother's toy collection. Sarg returned with his family to Germany when he was about seven years old and he entered a German military academy. By the age of 17, he actually obtained the position of lieutenant. At the age of 25, he started his career as an illustrator, essentially, as an artist and illustrator in London. But his fascination with marionettes was again piqued after attending the famous performance of Thomas Holden. Sarg often told the story about how he attended about 50 of Thomas Holden's productions. I had found out that by judicious craning of my neck, I could watch the operators of the puppets at work. How did they actually manipulate marionettes? How did they do the shows? But Holden and his company, like all companies at that time, guarded their secrets very carefully, never really being able to see behind the scenes, but by focusing so carefully. And after a while, he was able to observe it enough to be able to create his own puppets. Sarg made the determination to come to America in 1915 due to anti-German sentiment. He brought his family over to, to New York and began uh, performing his marionettes at his studio in the Flatiron Building. In New York, Sarg immersed himself in the worlds of art and publishing and received illustration commissions from the Saturday Evening Post, Boy's Life, American Girl, Ladies Home Journal, Good Housekeeping, and Vanity Fair, among others. Sarg was really smart. Um, he, you know, he had this idea about puppetry and the thought that he could do puppetry in the United States in a new way that draws on classic European marionette performance in the new world, in, in, in New York City and beyond. He drew all the illustrations for his posters, his broadsides, his brochures, his programs. He uses, you can see in photographs, a double bridge, which is to say there's the proscenium opening of the stage, and then there's a backdrop, and then there's a, a platform from which the puppeteers are operating the puppets. But then he also made such a platform, a bridge, right across the proscenium opening of the stage, and their puppeteers would, would face upstage, away from the audience, and they would also operate puppets. So you could have a lot of puppets on the stage at the same time. He ended up using marionettes that were on average about 24 inches tall. Then you'd have another two feet of visible strings above the proscenium, and then above that proscenium, you would have platforms that the puppeteers would be standing on to manipulate those marionettes using those wooden controllers that Tony Sarg invented. His sophisticated, nuanced performances have inspired generations of puppeteers, including Bill Baird, Remo Bufano, and Margot and Rufus Rose. Rufus and Margot Rose are a really interesting puppet couple. Margot sculpted the heads. She studied sculpture in Italy. Rufus carved the bodies and maybe did the stringing. They traveled these shows uh, around the country in the manner of, of the Sarg marionette tours. Puppetry is often the first type of theater that children are introduced to. 
He was particularly interested in engaging children in educational experiences that could be achieved through the art of puppetry. He also was extremely active in the artistic community around illustration and publications. Sarg illustrated many children's picture books as well as adult fiction humor. His most important book was his 1921 Tony Sarg Marionettes book. In that book, Sarg shared all of the secrets that he had learned through his career. He felt it was incredibly important to illustrate and provide information about how people could enjoy the art of puppetry by creating their own marionettes, their own stages, and their own plays. So in 1934, Tony Sarg partnered with the Madame Alexander Dow Company in New York to mass produce marionettes that would be available for children and families to purchase. There were 33 composite marionettes. Of the 33, they fell within 11 stories. There were scripts that were provided and you could also purchase small cardboard stages. So Tony Sarg was very much a leading light in puppetry and the marionette arts, and in large measure sort of revived or created a new enthusiasm for puppetry in the United States. But parallel with that, he really was a commercial artist, an illustrator, you know, from a, from a very sort of newspaper or news magazine or popular magazine background. He sort of branched off into product design, um, illustrated books, you know, and really took on a style of his own, created his own look and feel that is very distinctive. I think he was really smart about supporting himself. Sarg had a remarkably expansive career. He created murals for major hotels and department stores. He opened uh, several toy stores that were extremely popular and that made him a very beloved figure in those locations. Tony Sarg is often remembered for his retail shops. They really were a project for his wife. His wife wanted to own a shop and run a shop. After they arrived on Nantucket in 1920, sought a way to do this. They turned the show window into a little display window for toys. It was known as being a charming place. People who were children in the 1930s remember going to the Tony Sarg shop. Possibly they, their parents bought them something there. It is really incredible, the presence of this man on Nantucket to this day. You know, really successful, obviously, is a whaling port and a fleet uh, that sent whale ships, you know, around the, the Horn to the Pacific and bringing back whale oil to Nantucket. And, and was that way from really the middle of the 1700s right up in through the first part of the 1800s. And then as whaling began to go elsewhere, whale oil was no longer necessary. Nantucket really started to sort of fall upon hard times. I think for a period of time there, with that seafaring uh, age passing them by, with the railroad expanding on the mainland, um, Nantucket was sort of the, the island that time forgot. Until I think some people started thinking of it as this destination where you could go to escape. When you go to the, the auction houses on Nantucket in the summer, where they're selling whaling harpoons and antique chairs and fine rugs, you'll often find Sarg material. It's all said to be Sarg as if you don't need any introduction to who he was. Tony Sarg was also one of America's earliest animators. He created a series of short films called Tony Sarg's Almanac, in which he used a wonderful shadow puppet approach he would actually design the puppets himself. He would use stop motion animation to create movement and they became extremely popular, running in major motion picture theaters as a prelude to a film. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is something that, you know, when I was a kid um, many decades ago, well, yeah, that's what you watched. In the first couple years of the parade, Macy had displayed wild animals from the Bronx Zoo and unfortunately was not a success because it was scaring the children and Macy was very concerned and called Sarg who was at sitting at his studio and um, as the tale would be is uh, Macy asked him if he had a, a new idea for the parade a, a spectacle that no one had ever seen before Sarg was sitting at his desk and there were marionettes hanging um, from his walls, and he got the idea of upside-down marionettes, and that was the kind of the impetus 
for the inflatable balloons in the Macy's Day Parade, which are still used almost 100 years later. And the, the, the inflatable puppets are a real innovation in puppet technology. Sometimes they're not referred to as puppets, they're referred to as balloons, for example, but they're puppets, you know, they're huge puppets. They're like the biggest puppets you can imagine. And they've become part of the po popular consciousness. They're sort of essential elements, if you will, of American celebrations of Thanksgiving. And so in 1937, he hatched an idea for a balloon that could be interpreted as a sly reference to Nantucket. Um, in the 1830s, there were stories about a sea monster spied off Nantucket, and actually a group of, of whalers took a boat out hoping to hunt for this sea monster. So in August of 1937, two fishermen reported to the local newspaper that they had found giant inexplicable footprints on one of the beaches of Nantucket. And a photographer went out with them and took these photographs of these enormous, you know, sort of three-toed creature footprints. Inexplicable. And between Macy's and himself, they decided everyone could get more publicity if this originated in Nantucket. So then a few days go by, and there is a sighting of, seemingly, a large sea serpent or sea monster. And what it was was that Tony Sarg had been working with a manufacturer on a new balloon for the Macy's Parade of a sea serpent. And the first thing he did with it was he had it shipped to Nantucket. And they took the head of it out to Kotu, they inflated the head on the beach, and then floated the head on the harbor. And then there were all these pictures taken, and undoubtedly people from town could gaze across the harbor and be like, what is that? Is that a, is this a, a, we're not Loch Ness, what is this? There were stories that were written and planted in the local paper, the Enquirer and Mirror, which is still being published today after 175 years, about this sea serpent has been seen. They planted footprints on the sand at night. They had, a fisherman said they saw a sighting. There were a number of people who were involved in this, but it was highly secretive. They then stored the balloon overnight, and the next day on what was known as South Beach, uh, a beach right close to town, easy walking distance, they inflated the entire balloon on the beach and had it there for the public to come. Lots of people came to see. Parents took pictures of the balloon with their children in it. The Nantucket Historical Association and its collection has photographs that people have given us from you know, their childhoods when they stood next to the balloon. Quite a known story on Nantucket. Um, when people, people recognize Tony Sarg on the island very easily, and then people talk about the sea serpent, the sea monster hoax. The pictures of the sea serpent, the sea serpent was huge. So towards the end of the 1930s, Tony Sarg was finding himself in, in a peculiar, difficult financial situation. The World's Fair was coming to New York in 1939, and he thought that this might be the way to turn that around. And so Tony Sarg invested a lot of his own resources and dollars to create products to sell at the 1939 World's Fair. One of those products was a wooden cane that had a pull-out map of the World's Fairgrounds. Unfortunately, Sarg did not see the financial return from his investment, and it was in 1939 that he filed for bankruptcy. Puppetry today still falls into this category of ubiquitous and invisible, which is to say that when I look at the different forms of puppet performance and performing objects, I see them everywhere. Sarg still has that magic power to bring people in, make them smile. He was a man that was beyond his time. The only excuse for working hard is liking it. Then naturally, work ceases to be work at all. On February 17, 1942, Tony Sarg passed away due to complications from a ruptured appendix. A lifelong genius at play, Tony Sarg is remembered for his extraordinary impact on American popular culture.
but most especially for the wonder and joy that he brought to everyone who encountered his work.